everyone, it is I, Reverse, and welcome back to some more Knights and Dragons. Today, we are going to be talking about two things. First thing is going to be the War of the Enchantress. Uh, well, not, that's not going to be the first subject, because the first subject is going to be epic bosses in general. I do have something to talk about with you guys, and I need your feedback and all that good stuff. So prepare to actually, you know, leave a comment about this, because I really need your help on this. So, here's the idea. You guys have been asking me and requesting me to defeat the epic boss 15 times. And to be honest, that is kind of boring, you know. Defeating it 43 times is pretty tough and it really provides some challenge. But level 15, let's face it, it's going to be really extremely boring to watch that because, well, it's so easy. There's no challenge involved whatsoever and that's why I've been refraining from bringing out an episode like that. How about, you know, you guys have been asking me to actually bring that out regardless. But I've been thinking, you know, how about if we actually went on the hand and did that, like defeating it 15 times, but making an analyzation episode out of that, you know? I notice from time to time that the news flash is a little bit long, and what if I were to take the news flash epic boss segment in which I'm analyzing the boss and talking about the armors and everything and all that good stuff in the actual 15th kill episode? I think that's actually going to... I think that's actually going to help out a lot because the news flash should be a news flash. It should not be an analyzation episode of the epic boss or just the. It just should be very brief and short about what the new events are in Knights and Dragons. Well, we got going to have some time to actually talk about the epic boss in general, and it might be a little bit long. I'll be having some time to talk about what the weaknesses are and what kind of armors are strong against it because usually during the news flash I'm like mm, this is gonna be too long this is gonna be too long so I really want to bring this out to you guys but if you guys don't like it I'm not gonna do it so if even if a handful of you guys do think it's gonna help you out and if you guys do think it's gonna be entertainment and you guys will be liking to see something like that let me know down in the comment section below i need some voices here so if you usually never comment about this kind of stuff i'm asking you guys to comment this time so that way we can actually get something ongoing here so that being said that out of my system finally i brought it out to you guys and uh, really am positive about this that we actually can make this happen but if you guys don't like it i also would like to hear it so gonna be moving on to the second subject in this uh, episode here so um let me just quickly collect my money here because money is always in the way it's always something that kind of bothers me that i'm having this money that's gonna be hard um never mind okay war of the enchantress now this is actually gonna be quite interesting for several reasons here first of all we are talking about the release of a new epic armor and that's gonna be called the stormwatch raiment it's actually quite a nice armor. I'm just going to be talking about the armors first. And then I'm going to be talking about what my expectation is. And what we can see and everything. So the Stormwatch Raymond Plus is actually a really amazing armor. It is the best epic in the game. Uh, without a doubt. Because uh, the total combined stats uh, do defeat the Demortuis armor. So because of that it has 28 total stats more. Making it the best epic in the game. Now there is another side effect to this is that it's just a water type mono so that kind of means that it's a little bit weaker well a lot weaker than the uh, than the Demortuis robes and the reason for that is because well if you're taking a look at your guild you're not going to get the full benefit if you're having the Demortuis which is a spirit with air you're gonna get the spirit air, uh, bonus and you're gonna get the air bonus both at the same time but uh, uh, what's it called the Stormwatch Raymond you're only got, gonna get the water bonus so that's the problem here not a lot of people are gonna be very happy with this armor here and that brings me to my next uh, point rank 2 to rank 10 is the regular version of the Stormwatch Raymond although in the plus version it is the best legend uh, epic in the game the best regular version of the game is actually still the Dragonborn Aegis and the Dragonborn Aegis is still having 10 stats more than the uh, than the Stormwatch Raymond so that's actually quite interesting and I wasn't expecting that to be honest but um, the stats are very balanced um, the attack and the defense are almost entirely the same it's still pretty crazy uh, the plus version has a slight difference here we're talking about like 80 stats here um, in favor of the attack it does like 79 more attack than defense so yeah that's kind of like a small little minor detail there but the regular version is quite nice I really like uh, I really like it a lot if I were to be going for top 10 I'll be very happy because it would really help me out tremendously but some people might back to differ we'll be talking a little bit more about that later 
rank 11 to 25 it is the infamous soul shard necromanto and um the reason for me saying infamous is probably because this is one of the most wanted epics out there of all time and i'm not lying when i'm talking about this i'm actually being that serious so it has a huge attack stat and i'm talking about a huge it's nothing compared to the stormwatch raymond because it has basically the same attack but you gotta take it into consideration the soul shard necromancer is one of the older war epics out there so that's kind of the reason why this armor is so crazy because the attack stat essentially was the biggest attack stat for a long time and I'm not, I'm not lying or anything when I'm talking about this. I mean, if you take a look at the difference here of attack and defense, it's 500. And that's massive. So this is a huge powerhouse. This is a highly offensive armor. So the reason why a lot of people actually went for this armor is for the main fact that this armor was, well, I suppose, one of the strongest arms in the game for a long time. Also, because it looked really cool and because the attack was really high people were like i need to get this armor so that's part of the reason why so many people actually do like this armor and i'm very happy that it's here now let's actually go to the next armor here it is the same type element the ashira's armor is also water and spirit and the ashira's armor is actually quite an outdated epic boss armor the ashira's armor actually came out on the 21st of november and the event ended on the 27th of november so that means you had a week to get it as any end type out, uh, as any epic boss out there but if you take a look at the stats here this is the plus version right so we have 1283 attack and defense here if you compare it to what we have right now like half a year later we're talking about 1525 and 1493 so that's a major difference here so that's part of the reason why i'm saying don't go for this armor to actually use it in your lineup because you're not gonna be well you're not gonna be happy using this one i mean it's not really worth it first of all and second of all it's just gonna be you know it's just gonna be pulverized in the arena or everywhere where you're gonna be using it so it's highly outdated but it's still nice fusing material but the plus version of course well let's not talk about that because the stats are even worse than uh, than the other one so that's kind of like the legendary out there it's a little bit of a disappointing legendary i gotta say this is gonna be the last time in this episode in which we're gonna be talking about this legendary because the focus is gonna be on the epics and of course the ultra rare is gonna be the spectral captain's uniform regular version and the plus version nothing all that interesting to be said here it's still nice quite nice fusing material and this is um well i suppose one of my favorite three stars out there so that being said let's actually go ahead and and scroll back to the first few positions here because now i actually want to be talking about how i feel this war is going to evolve or is gonna be or what my expectation is or what my thoughts and opinions are and if you guys want to be talking along and discuss feel free to do so in the comment section down below that's where the comment section is for so that way you can have a discussion ongoing and other good stuff and i really feel i'm always like the type of person who really wants to get a community ongoing so let's make that happen here so First of all, rank 1. Stormwatch Raymond, uh, Death Knights are not going to be all that happy and excited for this armor. Obviously, they are going to be going for it because, who knows, Death Knights are always in rank 1 here. So, that's pretty much set in stone here. Let's go move on to rank 2 to rank 10. Maybe if there's a crazy guild out there who's actually going for the plus version. I feel that there would be, go I feel there would be a guild out there who would be attempting that, but not on this you know, particular guild war because the armor is just a mono water. Okay, so rank 2 to rank 10. That's gonna be, well, I suppose it's not gonna be quite interesting because it's gonna be the top guilds out there, obviously. But I feel that there's not gonna be a lot of points in here for the sheer fact that this epic is not all that interesting. Now, of course, when people are entering the top 10 for the first time, this epic is gonna be absolutely amazing. I already said it before. For me, it would be really, really helpful. And that's what I want to bring out to you guys. So if if a top 10 contender or if a top 10 player would be going out, uh, joining, the to uh, joining the top 10 guild, they would be really happy with this one. But any long time member in the top 10, and by that I mean uh, people being in the top 10 for at least the last 5 guild wars, they're going to be like, but this is absolutely trash and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of money on this armor because, well, I'm not really going to do a whole lot with it. Um... That's totally understandable, by the way, but that's just like a luxury problem rather than, you know, an actual issue here because, well, Greece trying to bring out arms anyway that are interesting. But what's going to be really interesting for you guys 
is gonna be rank 11 to rank 25. As I already said, the Soul Shard Necromant is a crazy looking armor. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I just, every time I see it, I just fall in love. I just love the way it looks. I want to get one of these so bad, you guys have no idea. Like, I would really be happy if I would be getting my hands on one of these at some point given in the future. It doesn't have to be now, it can be in the future, like when I'm fusing it away. Um, at the moment it actually becomes fusible, which is gonna be like one year from now. But, what I'm saying is the Soul Shard Necromanto is a very nice looking armor. And I feel that because the Soul Shard Necromanto is so loved, like it's so loved, you guys have no idea. There's this whole community ongoing with people like... Like like a Justin Bieber community just for the Soul Shard Necromant. No, I'm, I, I, I'm kidding. I just I just ran. <laughs> wow, I just realized how stupid I was talking. But the Soul Shard Necromant, on and all, so many people are gonna love this armor. I've been getting so many messages on the line chat where people were just like, you know, reversal. My guild is new, but we're gonna go for top 25. Well, it's not exactly a new guild, but it's gonna be. Um, a crazy war out there and I expect to see a lot of new guilds out there to be you know trying to hit uh, top 25 because well this as I already said this app is gonna be crazy now um, there are something you need to take into consideration here and this is gonna be for the people who are not sure whether or not what kind of guild they want to look for to get in top 25 with because I can understand if you are seeing this epic that you're gonna be triggered and be like hey I want this so bad, but I'm not entirely sure which type of guild I want to go for. Well, I actually um, can break it down to you guys, so that way you can actually select a good guild out there. So if you're the type of player who generally doesn't go for a top 25 position, but you really want to give this epic a shot, and you really want to get into a good guild for the top 25, there is actually a... A group a few groups of people which I would suggest you take into consideration when you're joining a top 25 guild uh, you gotta be taking a look at the regular top 10 guilds out there and the regular guilds who are in the top 10 obviously are the whole DK Empire like the, the Death Knights Empire those guys are absolutely crazy they are hold, usually holding like five of the ten positions or even more um, in within the top ten so these are the guys you want to be looking for to actually uh, join one of their sub guilds to actually join top 25 then there's also the rebels which is consisting of the gypsy jokers and holy of mass and war incorporated those are also part of the top ten from time to time and then there's also the coalition which is consisting of uh, the knights of Arians, um, the deviants there's always going to be part of them and they have been like consisting uh, they've been very solid top 25 top 10 guilds so what i would suggest that you guys do is to contact one of these guilds out there which, which i've just named like and and ask if they have a slot available within their top 25 guild because usually these guilds and you don't have to take my word for it but i'm just basically talking from what i know these guilds usually have a plan set up already. They have a set amount of gems they want to at least go for with the minimum. Um, uh, and these guilds are absolutely dedicated to get these epics out there. So I would really suggest you guys go with one of these guilds. And not for a guild that has never been in the top 25. Because, well, truth to be told here. Um, facts and numbers and statistics speak better than words. You know, deeds are always better than words. So people can say... They're gonna go for top 25. I can say that I'm gonna go for top 25. But I know for a fact that I'm not gonna be making it. Because my my guild is a gem free guild. So people can say a lot. But documentation never lies. So if you actually want to get into a good top 25 guild. You might want to look at one of my recap episodes. In which I'm going down through the top 25. To see which kind of guild you see a lot in there. So that way you can make a good decision based off that. So that is really... My tip to the people who wa really want to go for top 25, I feel this war is going to be um, really crazy. I have no idea what's going to happen. I feel that there is going to be uh, a, a huge, at least a solid amount of points being distributed here. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen in iOS. Um, I kind of feel the same thing is going to happen down there. So that is kind of my whole vision or my thoughts and my opinions about what's going to happen in this epic war. You know, by all means, you, you're free to disagree with everything that, I, that I've been saying. What I just want to tell you guys is, 
I'm not entirely sure either, so don't you don't have to take my word for the things that I've been saying. But if you feel that there are some truth in the things that I've been saying, and I, if, if you feel that it actually helped you out, you know, let me know and, you know, I'll be pretty happy if, my, if I'm getting some feedback whether or not my information actually helped out. And if I actually said something wrong, I apologize for that. Uh, I've just been talking from what I know, you know, my type of view. And I know that sometimes is an issue when I'm pointing out something, people are gonna come up to me and they're gonna be like, well, reversal. You know, you got it absolutely wrong. And I'm gonna be like, yeah, but you gotta tell me then how I should do it better. So, I've been actually throwing out the guilds out there that I feel you guys should be pretty comfortable being in with. If you actually wanna go for top 25. And I hope it's gonna help you out. And I really wish every single guild out there the best of luck. My guild's gonna go for top 250. I feel, I have a good feeling about it this time. As I have every single time, even though we sometimes we don't make it. But it's gonna be a lot of fun and something to definitely look forward to. So I apologize for a long episode. It's been like, I don't even know, like 16 minutes now. So going to round this thing off here. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, make sure that if you guys like this video to boom, give it a thumbs up. This was iReversal for Knights and Dragons. I'll be signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.